All right, hi everyone, welcome back to Steam Flow. Today we're checking out Dying Light the Beast on the Steam Deck. This is Techland's brutal return to Kyle Crane's story where you're part human, part beast, and absolutely tearing through infected in a more rural, foresty setting. This was originally supposed to be a DLC for Dying Light 2, but the project expanded into a standalone game, and I think it's turned out to be quite the experience. But I'm here to answer the question does it run on the Steam Deck, and should you play it on the Steam Deck? Without further ado, let's jump in. In terms of gameplay, this plays a lot like the original Dying Light. You have parkour, close quarters melee, scavenging and big messy fights, but with new beast powers this time around. When you transform into the beast, you feel invulnerable for a bit and you can literally tear limbs off enemies. It's tons of fun and gives combat an extra visceral layer. Exploration is pretty open, it's not a strict corridor, you can poke around towns, farms and woods, you can approach enemies in a few different ways, and the pacing and tone definitely lean closer to the first game. I did not play much of Dying Light 2, uh, there was something there missing from the first game, but I think this one is a lot closer to the first game. So if you like that one, I think you'll enjoy this one in terms of gameplay. Now on the performance, the game has multiple upscalers when you run it in DirectX 12. You have TAAU, which is Temporal Anti-Aliasing Upscaling. You have FSR 3, you have XCSS. There's also frame generation available built in. Now all the upscalers have been set to balanced and with TAAU set to balanced. You're looking at it right now. I think the picture is a bit soft, but it is clean and I'm getting between 30 and 40 FPS outdoors, uh, mostly sticking to the 30s, and it will drop to about 27, 28 FPS in combat, sometimes even dropping to 20, depending on the combat. When I was fighting a mini boss, it dropped to 21 FPS. I think with this upscaler, frame time feels quite stable, but the game can be a bit stuttery during combat. Now with FSR, FSR always has that fuzziness around it. It is a bit more fuzzy, especially around edges or around shadows. I did not notice any of the shimmering effect that usually comes with FSR, so it does look a little bit better than it did on other games. However, if I had to compare it to TAAU, I think it's a bit rougher, so I would prefer TAAU over FSR. And finally, we have XSS. I think XSS actually gave me one or two FPS more in many scenes. It does produce a little bit softer, warrior. Uh, picture this is what XSS really does it deals a lot with blur but uh, in a number of places XSS ended up being better than TAAU because of slightly higher FPS and in terms of visuals I did not see much of a difference between both so I would personally go with XSS but you can choose between XSS and TAAU and you're gonna have a pretty similar experience our game does have frame generation built in with FSR it's the FSR frame generation it will push the FPS up to 60 or even 70 but there's noticeable input lag it's actually a lot better than what i've tested recently with other games that have frame generation the controls start to feel a little bit floaty or maybe jittery is the world like the whole thing is kind of starts snapping uh, and when you are in combat you can definitely notice it it's not a great experience so i would avoid that at all costs now i did also try loss of scaling and i was able to get to 60 even more than 60 a lot of the time However, it does introduce a lot of visual artifacts, especially on the subtitles at the bottom. If you're somebody who likes to read the subtitles, you're going to have a hard time doing that with lossless scaling. Uh, I also noticed issues with the actual picture. Sometimes around poles or cables, you can definitely see a lot of warping going on. In terms of input lag, it was a lot better than the built-in frame generation, but you could still feel some input lag. Now, when I jumped into the first boss fight, which dropped me to the low 20s uh, in terms of FPS, you could definitely feel lossless scaling not working as well. It basically just doubles the FPS, so it will drop down to about 40, 44, and it starts getting uh, really laggy, really stuttery. So I don't recommend using it, even though it's a good solution most of the time. I would just prefer to play at low. 30 fps the game also offers you the option between uh, directx 11 and directx 12 and the biggest difference is that directx 12 offers you more upscaling i think xcss is not available on directx 11 uh, but in terms of performance i did not see any difference so i would just go with directx 12 if you want to run it uh, with xcss and all of this was at the absolute lowest settings so everything was set to low and in conclusion i recommend setting everything to the absolute low use xcss or taau set to balanced Avoid FSR frame generation and if you want a bit more stability just cap the FPS to 30 using the Steam Deck limiter. Even though the game can reach 40 in some areas I just cap it to 30 
and I had a pretty good experience outside of that one combat where I dropped to 25. The game mostly stays around the 30 mark. Onto battery life, pretty much on anything I tested, whether it be XSS, TAU or FSR, battery life was around 2 hours and 30 minutes. When you do cap it to 30 FPS, you can squeeze a little bit more, going around 2 hours 40 minutes sometimes. But this battery life is pretty standard for 2025 game running on the OLED. Now I also want to mention the thermals, I did reach 78. 79 uh, degrees on the GPU and around 75 degrees on the CPU and the fan was running almost at full speed it was mostly at 5500 rpm I think 6000 is the max speed the Steam Deck definitely did get warm and the fan is loud but it is within safe operating limits I did not experience any crashes due to heat or anything like that if you cap the game at 30 fps it gives you a little bit better thermals uh, but not by much now onto controls I think the controls feel very snappy melee parkour and B moves all felt pretty responsive uh, even when the FPS dipped and combat still feels pretty good at low FPS uh, which I think is very important for this game. The game doesn't offer full customization of controls. You can change a few presets but you can't really remap the buttons. I had an issue with this because by default the jump button is R2 and I kept wanting to attack with R2 uh, so I kept jumping into enemies so that's the thing that you're gonna have to contend with. Now the game offers a lot of accessibility options uh, you can change subtitle size color uh, different subtitles can have different colors so you can add background to subtitles there's three colorblind modes mono audio motion sickness reduction and uh, for multiplayer you can actually uh, adjust voice chat volume or turn that off completely the game also has co-op mode which is pretty great i didn't get to test that out but it should work just as fine on the steam deck so in conclusion i think you can have a pretty good time playing dying light the beast on the steam deck uh, the game will run mostly at 30 fps but it will sometimes dip if you're playing on a higher difficulty and you're playing against a boss uh, the low fps might actually cause you to uh, lose the fight so this is something that you have to keep in mind but for the most part the game will run at 30 fps so if your expectations are to play at 30 fps yeah the steam deck can definitely do that you can also experiment with lossless scaling but as i said uh, it will introduce a lot of visual artifacts and i will just stick with 30 fps and not bother with any of that that's gonna be it for this video if you found it helpful you can support the channel by leaving a like and subscribing for more Steam Deck content and if you're looking to purchase Dying Light the Beast at a discount you can do so using my affiliate link for instant gaming I'll have that in the description when you use that link it will help support the channel and you can try and get the game at a little bit of a discount and don't forget to follow my Steam Curator page where I post all my reviews for all the games I run on the Steam Deck and I recommend what you can play and what not link will be in the description thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.